right now in the world there's so much tension going on and people are on edge and people are worried about the things that are taking place especially in light of the scripture here in front of me in Isaiah 17 where it says the burden of Damascus behold Damascus is taken away from being a city and it shall be a ruinous heap uh, the cities of Aurora are forsaken they shall be for flocks which shall lie down, and none shall make them afraid. The fortress also shall, shall, shall cease from Ephraim, and the kingdom from Damascus, and the remnant of Syria, they shall be as the glory of the children of Israel, saith the Lord of hosts. And in that day it shall come to pass that the glory of Jacob shall be made thin, and the fatness of the flesh, excuse me, of his flesh shall wax lean, and it shall be as when the harvestman gathereth the corn and reapeth the ears with his arms and he shall be as he gathereth ears in the valley of Raphim. Um, we are certainly, uh, it's been said that Damascus uh, has never been destroyed as a city. It's, it's survived down through the, through the centuries. It's the oldest city on the face of the earth and yet Everybody is gathered around, all the, the nations of the world are gathered around this little country called Syria. And, um, and, and the situation that we have here is very grave, no doubt. The United States has their warships in the Mediterranean as well as in the Red Sea. Uh, the Russians have also dispatched their own ships in, uh, in the region there. There is talk of the United States um, punishing Syria for the gassing of their own people and of course there's a lot of speculation there as well um, I know there's every kind of conspiracy theory you can imagine out there and, and maybe there's truth in these theories as well I don't want to discount them because for sure there's a reason why everything is happening the way it is right now and um, so I felt like it would be a good thing, especially in light of all this situation here, to come and speak with you a little bit about this. I'm hoping to have Gary Lowry on with me tomorrow night. Um, and Gary, uh, for those of you that may not know him, he does a channel on YouTube. And I apologize, I just don't know it off the top of my head right now. Uh, but we'll try to post that, especially tomorrow night. We'll make sure we bring that up. Gary God deals with a lot in dreams, and, 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 and I have been speaking with Gary now for a little over a year, and I have watched his dreams come to pass in many instances, and, uh, and quite frankly, quite uh, interesting to see the things that God has shown him. So I wanted to bring Gary on, specifically on a couple of dreams that I knew that he had. He had told me about them six months, eight months ago, even a year ago and uh, things that we're seeing come to pass right now in the Middle East. Uh, everything from the, the Russian warship that was dispatched recently uh, to the Mediterranean, uh, the numbers on the ship, uh, just quite a few amazing things there that I think would um, help bring people's attention to what's going on. Now, there of course there's a lot of fear that if the United States uh, sends missiles over into Syria, what will be the aftermath? Well, to me that's kind of obvious uh, what will be the aftermath. Someone is going to retaliate um, and I have always been of the belief that the third temple of Israel would be built alongside of the Dome of the Rock, but as I have been watching the events unfold I have begun to believe more so that maybe it will actually be where the Dome of the Rock sits because if the retaliation from Iran or Syria or Lebanon or any a number of other countries, Jordan included, begin to try to shell Israel, someone may make a mistake and hit the Dome of the Rock. Well, mistake for them anyway. And then uh, that would just be certainly an international sign for Israel that it's time to build the third temple. Uh, I am going to go back and re-examine the scriptures here in Ezekiel because uh, there's some things that are on my heart that I feel like that I should look at and um, to see exactly what God says in His Word about the building of this temple. Now we do know that the Antichrist does come in and uh, according to the Prince that shall come, I, you know, I say the Antichrist, let me say it like this here, the Prince that shall come 
uh, whether you want to call that the false prophet or however you want to label that, he's going to stand in, this, in, in the sanctuary. He's going to actually work his way in there. Um, it looks like that as all this begins to gear up, what we're going to see here, once they begin the construction of that third temple, that's when your seven years will begin. And that's where, you know, friends, I can't, I cannot stress to you the seriousness of the hour you're living in. I think people recognize this on a daily basis now. They're starting to understand that, you know, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to turn on the news and to recognize what's going on in the Middle East. It's very bad. And <clears throat> yet I say bad, yet Israel is rejoicing. Uh, now, there are many secular Israelis that are not rejoicing. But for the religious side of the Jews, we know that redemption draweth nigh. And this is what the Christian is supposed to be recognizing as well. It says in your Bible that when you see all these things coming to pass, lift up your hand, your redemption draweth nigh. You know, even Micah says, when you're mourning for Israel, rejoice for Israel, for God has brought us to this place. You know, now certainly, will we be like in travail? Absolutely. You know, when you look at the Gog and Magog war, and we're going to go by this chapter by chapter, verse by verse very soon, but when we look at this Gog and Magog invasion, Israel spends seven years dismantling the armaments that come into our country and having to just get rid of it. Seven months we spend burying the bodies. So, will our land be invaded by foreign troops? Absolutely. And no doubt when the United States shells Syria, now they claim right now that they're not going to, you know, uh, Obama seems to be very confident that Russia will not do anything about this. I'm not so sure about that. But what will spark Russia to want to come down and do something about it? Now there's talk that the United States may go much further than what people are anticipating with their attacks. Well, keep in mind, once we take and attack Syria, there's going to be a retaliation, whether it's from Syria, whether it's from Iran, Lebanon, the Hezbollah, whoever it may be, there's going to be a retaliation. Israel is going to be the target because no doubt the United States is making sure their ships are far enough off so they're not a target. And I realize any scenario could happen. I mean, it doesn't mean that it has to be in this order here in the first place and maybe not in this order at all. But if we take some hypothetical situations, if Syria retaliates and sends a chemical weapon into Israel, any massive loss of life that Israel suffers is going to bring serious consequences from Israel. So yes, it's not going to take any time at all for Damascus to become a ruinous heap. Now, the question would be, why is this going to be fulfilled in such a manner? Well, God plainly says in His Word that He's going to repay those nations that have come against Israel while she was in her captivity. And I'm going to find this scripture for you. I've, I've read it many times before. Um, it just comes to my heart as I'm thinking right now, so I don't have it in front of me. I wish I could remember the exact wording, but when Israel was scattered as a nation, and God says that we were scattered, and He said He did it because of our sins, but the nations, and pardon me for a moment, the nations, they went beyond what they should have done, and they, they did evil unto Israel in her captivity. And so God has got a score to settle, so to speak. Syria, and we're not talking about Babylon when Babylon did what they did. God's already paid Babylon back for what they did. And, but when it comes to Syria, Syria dispersed the northern ten tribes. Now God allowed it because of sin, and we got scattered to all the world. But the problem is, now judgment is beginning. So Syria is going to be the first one to be judged, I believe. And I'm, I feel confident about this. That's why I believe Damascus becomes a ruinous heap. After Damascus is destroyed, then this will infuriate Russia, Iran, the Arab world. They will align themselves together, the king of the north, 
and they will come down into Israel to take Israel in retaliation for what Israel does. I believe now, now I, and there again, right now I'm just kind of thinking out loud with you. I'm not saying this is of the Lord. I'm just showing you some things that it looks like it may be here. But it seems to be plausible in this regard here that what will happen at that point is when they invade Israel, they will literally break the borders. They will get into the country. No doubt many of our people, the Jewish people, will perish as a result of this. But this is when God will intervene for us. I think of the scripture in, in Deuteronomy. Uh, in fact, it's what the Lord had me put on my website the other day at IsraelReturns.com. And I'll just share that with you. It's something I think would be very interesting. I had been in prayer and just not knowing what to say. And I said, Lord, what could I say to your people, Father? You know, what, what would you have me to say? And, um, um, and as I looked at the word here, for an answer from the Lord here on this. And pardon me here, I'm, my spelling is atrocious here. So D-U-T-E-R-O-N-M-Y, okay. Still don't got something I've got wrong here. Hang on. I can't get the word Deuteronomy spell right here. D-E-U-T-E-R-O-N, I, I keep, I can't see well enough, and then I make all those little mistakes there. Anyway, Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 1. And, um, and so the Lord, I opened my, my Torah, and I, and I came right to this passage, and the Lord laid on my heart, post this up as a message to my people. And this is what it says here. When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies, and seest horses and chariots and people more than thou, be not afraid of them. For Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be when you come nigh into the battle, that the priests shall approach and speak unto the people, and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint. Fear not, and do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. And this is exactly what God is about to do for Israel. But you know, sometimes though we think of salvation and we think that salvation means that God is just going to take and wipe out all the enemies around Israel and everything and there's not going to be any fights, there's not going to be any loss of life, life at all. You know, not everybody in Israel even though we're Jewish by birth, not everybody loves the Lord there. When God brought the 1.2 million Jews out of Egypt, we went out as a mixed multitude. And that didn't mean that the ones that were not Jewish didn't believe Moses. I'm sure many of them did. But you know, as they went along the way, God ended up killing every one of the original ones and ended up only the children being saved. <coughs> so, the thing is, is what, is, what, do we, what do we have here? What's going on? You know, our country, for the most part, well over half our country is just secular. And it doesn't mean that they're not Jewish, and it doesn't mean that they're lost because of this. I'm just telling you, just like America, they call America a Christian nation. It's far from being a Christian nation. Maybe at one time she was a Christian nation, but now, you know, like Israel, you know, you came in here and you, you overtook the land and you, you, you killed off the Indians and pushed them back and put them on reservations and everything else. Israel did the same thing. And you became a strong nation and a mighty nation. And now your time has come to an end. And... The judgment of God not only is going to fall on Syria, it's going to fall on this country as well. Now, I don't know exactly how much longer God will have mercy on the United States. But it seems to be awfully obvious that things are turning against us. 
with the current administration being so dead set against Israel? I know outwardly they look like that we're their friends. I mean, they got John Kerry up there fighting for them. Good Catholic boy. Died in the wool, 100% behind the Pope. And you know, it's kind of funny. I, if you, I don't know if you guys noticed that, you know, the Pope actually uh, was condemning any attack against Syria. Well, that's the, probably the public cry anyway. Wonder what goes on behind the scenes. Where does the Pope stand then? Who knows? It's hard to say. But the thing is, is the days in, that, that follow, we're going to see a lot happen. We're going to see a lot of things unravel and a lot of things come to light. And let me just say this tonight as we near down to the end of our time here. You got loved ones that do not know Jesus Christ. Yeshua HaMashiach is their Savior. You need to pray for them. Take the time and talk with them. <coughs> we don't have time, you know, and I'm not just talking about trying to get them to church with you or to Sunday school class. You need to talk to them about who Jesus Christ really is. Let me share another scripture with you here. This was something that came on my heart the other day. And... Um, and it really burdened me tremendously. I, was, I caught the tell, of, tell in of a program on television where uh, a man had written a book. Um, and in his book, uh, he they were interviewing him about the young people and how that um, the video games, the, the violent video games and stuff have been such an inspiration for violence. And, uh, and, I, and I caught, when I caught just the tail end of the conversation, he was talking about how that children, these young children that were in prison that had murdered people, how that they had practiced loading and unloading their guns while they were playing the video game, desensitizing them to the violence that goes on around the world. And my heart was just moved by it. And then I began to think about how young people are today. Everywhere you go, in public and not in public, you know, I mean, in your personal homes, you see them, I mean, you know your own children and how they do, and, and uh, we've got young children still yet, and we have to deal with this on a daily basis ourselves. But even in public, everywhere you go, you see kids on uh, phones, smartphones, smart pads, iPads, Androids, whatever there may be, their heads are just consumed into games or whatever. And for the most part, especially with boys, it's all about they want to get into the violent games and things of that nature there. And um, we don't permit that in our home. But the thing is, though, there's a lot of homes that they pay no attention. Or the television, what they may watch. If you, if you got one, if you don't got one, God bless you, you're better off without it. Um, you know, but children today, they're exposed with their friends and everything, but children have gotten so far away from even interacting with other friends unless it's about video games. And, um, pardon me, I'm about to lose my voice again here, but... <coughs> And the, then it came to me, a very powerful scripture that I want to share with you. And um, hopefully by God's grace, if you pray for me, I believe I'll be able to do a little better tomorrow. I want to get into Esther, so I'm hoping my voice will come back as well. But I want to share something with you that's very important here. And it says in Genesis chapter 6, in verse 4, there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. You know, let me read verse 6 before I go into this right here. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. 
Now, he didn't, God didn't say, and God saw that the wickedness of the man was great in the earth and that every action of his was evil. God said that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, brothers, sisters, little children that might be watching, if you happen to be sitting there with mama, daddy, parents, grandparents, let me really talk to you about this passage right here. What is going on in your own personal life? I know we have to deal with ourselves first. What do we think about as the day goes by? Men, brethren, you know, what, what do we think about as men? Is our thoughts on the Lord? Or is it on your neighbor's wife? Is it on the little girl that walks down the street? So much pedophilia going on today. Are you into the pornography on the computer and everything? Or, you know, and don't get me wrong, there's deliverance for any of these things. Jesus Christ has already paid it. You don't have to be bound to nothing. So if you're going through something and you think that you're bound to it, you're not. Jesus Christ has already paid the price for you to be free from any of these things. It's just whether or not you'll accept it or not. Don't believe Satan's lie. Now I hit on that right there because we even hear a lot of that in the churches. You know, the pastor gets up there and he preaches about pornography and, and what have you. But you know, what about the children? Are your children buried in a computer day after day, night after night? Does the family come home? Do you sit down? Do you talk together any about things about the Lord? Or is when you come out of whatever you've been involved, you know, when you come out of whatever you're involved in, are you just talking about whatever happened on the computer? Or are you watched a movie and that's the only, th that's the only thing you can do? You know, I had a friend of mine, a precious brother, and I know he listens to these videos even. I remember years ago as his sons were growing up, they were always into watching martial arts. I don't say martial arts are necessarily bad. You know, somebody does it as a sport for fun or something like that. But then again, you have to think about what the motive is behind it. But when you start watching all these shows, I, I, don't, I don't care to see them, period. Because when you start watching violence, then your imagination becomes violent. Watch your children. I remember this brother. I would come over to his home. And in those years in, I didn't even have a television in the house at all. Didn't want one. Felt more happy without it. And even now, we got one in our bedroom. It doesn't come on unless it's a cartoon for our daughter or something because she wants to see a little cartoon or something. My wife, no, she... She's more content being in her Bible or watching YouTube videos that talk about the Lord Jesus. That, that girl is day and night about Jesus. And so when she comes out of it, our conversations are upon the Lord. And we've watched even with our children. See, we're wanting our, our, our daughter the same way. Here she is, little bitty thing, all fixing to turn five here in September on the 23rd. She'll be five years old. That little girl, when you go out to dinner, she wants to be the one to pray. See? Our son, he's, he, he, gets, he, he gets a little nervous sometimes, especially if he hears these videos talking about the rapture or something like that come, and he's like, oh, oh let's get ready. <laughs> so, God bless him. But, you know, the thing is, is I'm very concerned now about the simple things that were taken for granted. You know, we've got even in our own family, we need to do a little policing up ourselves. I have to be quite honest. We're going to have to police up. When I saw this here about every imagination of the thoughts of, the, of his heart 
was only evil continually. Now, that doesn't mean that the person is just going around thinking about, oh gosh, you know, what can I do? Uh, uh, you know, who can I go beat up and, uh, and, and just sexual perverted thoughts and everything like that. It's just the fact that everything that you meditate on, none of it's good. It's all evil. If your children are doing video games that are sitting there shooting and killing the neighbors and stuff like that, and then the kids go out and play in the yard, the rest of the, or in the house or wherever it's at, and they go around and all they're doing is shooting up everything, their imaginations are on thoughts that are not holy, that's for sure. I don't say that the children are evil. The children are not evil because the children don't know any better. It takes mom and daddy to do that. It takes mom and daddy to guide their little minds in the right way they should go. And what I'm saying is that we've got to get, we are in too late of an hour to be playing church. We've got to get the hold of our families and think seriously. You know, husbands as well and mamas and daddies and children and grandparents and everything. Whatever you see that's going on, first look at yourself and say, God, what do I need to do to get my mind on you and my thoughts on you to be holy and not unholy? <coughs> And likewise, then, when you know, it's like Jesus said, you know, cast out the moat from your own eye so that you can see clearly enough to help your brother or your son or your daughter or your husband or your wife or your grandchildren, your grandparents. And when you do with love, just simply, you know, go in there and just start encouraging them. You know, say, gosh, you know, look, look at the news, what's going on. I mean, the coming of the Lord is at hand. When He said He was going to destroy the world, it was because the imagination of the heart was continually evil. Then there was nothing of righteousness upon the people's minds any longer. You know? I mean, we've got to think about this, people. We've got to think seriously, church. This is no time to keep playing games. Thank you for watching this broadcast. If you would like to be a part of this ministry, you can send your tax-free gift to... The Noon Institute at 12537 Gemstone Crescent, Fort Myers, Florida 33913. Or you can give securely online at www.israelreturns.com. For more resources, visit our website again at www.israelreturns.com. Also, please visit our YouTube channel, Ben Denoon. We would like to thank some of our valued friends for making this broadcast possible. Thank you for being with us. We trust that tonight's program has been a blessing.